Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. The sustainable business model in the Philippines. Um, this is quite a simple one, but it actually just works. It's why a lot of people exist in the Philippines. If you've got a small lot, you need to see what you've got available to you. The first thing is pigs and goats um, don't make big money, uh, but you can always sell the excess black market. 40% um, of the Philippines economy is black market, so you're not the only ones. But growing your, um, growing, yeah, fattening your own meat is worth doing. But also I think there's a, a market for organic meat. So having like a couple of goats, a couple of pigs, chickens and that sort of stuff is worth doing. Your worst problem is thieves. Um, Philippines is full of them. Your neighbors are thieves. I don't care what anybody says. There's people still even living next door to you. Um, that's all I'll say on that. But then there's like the peso peso machines. Sit them outside. They make a few, few quid every day. Um, having a little store. We sit, watch TV and then selling beer out the window. All makes money. Um, and then you can do bits and pieces online. Now, none of these ideas will get you rich. As I found myself though, it makes you sustainable. Because what you find is the peso peso machines will pay for your electric bills and they'll also pay for your internet. You'll then find that the Sari Sari store will pay for your food, you know, selling your beer out the window. Um, so that's that's your bills paid for. Um, if you own the lot as well, uh, as we did, we used to rent out the spare, spare apartment and spare rooms. That gives you extra money. That's your development money not of a hard business model not this is the thing it's not hard to make a little bit of money in the philippines there's always ways to make money um somebody mentioned about me when i said i could live on five thousand pesos a month they would find it quite hard and don't see why i would bother but the fact is i've got no issue with doing it because i build things up from it because when you, when i start with a small model like that it's much more sustainable to develop because I started with a solid foundation. I've got this budget, it's already coming in, all my bills are covered, etc. And then I go, okay, I'll build an apartment, rent that out. So then that'll pay for another apartment, another one, another one. And like we've got now, I've got six apartments. Um, we've got the Sari Sari store. We've got the, um, well, we ain't got the Pacer Pacer machines anymore, but we've got 45 computers. Uh, we've got the call center. All that started from very small things. And when we first moved to the Philippines, we had um, a place that's smaller than this hotel room. Um, it was basically double bedroom uh, with a kitchen, sitting room in one area, and then just a toilet bathroom. That was it. That's where we started. Um, and the reason I put this out there is it, you, anybody can do this with a bit of thought and a bit of like drive. I know so many people that arrive with very little. They might have a, a sustainable budget of $500 for their pension or whatever, but then they built up, um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. I have to have a search through my Facebook and spoke to him for a while. But um, he started off with a videoki store that was his girlfriend's and then they bought two more videoki machines that they rented out. Um, they then ended up buying another lot next door and building a house and stuff that it only took a couple of years now the funny thing is in the west a lot of this stuff is impossible to do anymore because the first thing you get is legislation red tape people are hassling you um but in the philippines it's achievable because Nobody cares. What they do care about is the big stuff. If you started to do a telecoms company, for example, you would find it a nightmare trying to set up in the Philippines. Um, if you're going in to set up a um, large computer corporation or something, you would find headaches with it. Anything involves big money is a big problem. So small scale, nobody cares. You're off the radar, it doesn't matter. But the advantage with small scale is people can't see it 
and it's easy to build them up. And I know I say about copycat businesses, but you have to remember a lot of people do these full time. But the way way I look at it is you have your pigs, your goats, chickens. So you've got your own food production for yourself. Plus, maybe you get a couple of solar panels in and drop yourself off the grid. But the, the point is you're trying to reduce your expenditures. So if you own the lot with your, your wife owns a lot already, you've got no rent. But then if you build another room and then rent that out, you've got an income. And then if you say, right, we'll put the internet on and do what we did, we shared it with the whole community. Um, we had three or four people paying internet um, and we just run cables. It wasn't wireless, it was cables into the other people's houses because we don't need the internet all the time. And all we tell you is don't play video games on it. It's not fair on everybody else. And people don't. And they, well, most of them don't, one does, but they know not to play games until midnight. So there's always ways around it. And the Philippines is built for that environment. It's used to sharing and doing this and doing that. That's why you get single sachets of shampoo and stuff like that, where you, don't, you know people don't have big bottles, they buy a sachet of shampoo because they use the smaller amounts. And as such, nobody cares if you split your internet up. Nobody's gonna go, oh, uh, my neighbor's giving all the internet between his neighbors and splitting it off and uh, they're sharing the cost nobody cares if anything that neighbor would be in trouble if they ever did that <laughs> because the, the way uh it's called chismis it, chismis in the philippines gossip is you will find out soon enough and it's very likely one of the other guys that had the internet off you is likely to deal with them for you <laughs> because they lost their internet if something ever happened but generally it doesn't because it's normal so that's my sustainable model it's easy to set up and it's why it's very easy to get to the Philippines, get things taking over and develop from there. Now, I wouldn't say go into the city and do it because the problem is the city is like any cities. Um, it's, it's all dog eat dog. Nobody looks after each other, not in the same way. You know? uh, it's all about this. Everybody's got bills to pay. Go more into the provinces. People are laid back. Nothing happens today. It happens this week. So it's got a different vibe to it, but also the cost of living and everything's cheaper. And I mean, I found that going to Negros Island, it was about 30% cheaper than living in Cebu. And I wasn't in Cebu City. I was on Cebu Island. Um, I'm south of Cebu, uh, Cebu uh, City. And I seen the cost and I was like, I can't believe how cheap this is compared to where we are, considering we're only uh, a ferry ride away, but it's because that is less developed. The population is lower. It's a heavily um, agricultural involved island. It does all sugar cane, that sort of stuff. Cebu is more industrial um, and it's seeing the rise of the coal centers, but I don't see that bubble um, being a sustainable model. Um, purely because people will get fed up with accents. Doesn't matter if it's um, Philippines, India, Thailand, China, whatever. I know myself, I will not deal with people <laughs> that are offshore. And that, that sounds quite funny from a guy that actually owns a call center, but the reality is that's, that's the reality. Um, I hear a foreign voice on my phone, I cut it off because I don't need customer service. If somebody calls me, it's to sell me something. And the fact that they called me out the blue, they won't even get past the hello. It, it's already gone by them. But will it improve? I don't think so. I think what will happen is the expectation that the, I know China, uh, China will be losing business back to the US. Um, the US expectation, I believe over the next 10, 10, 15 years is 20% of that business that went to China returning to the US. Um, and I can see that happening happening everywhere else because you've got to remember a lot of technologies um, are not viable uh, because the problem you've got is the UK and the US, we spend, 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 but we're not manufacturing and everything's financial business, financial business. It's not a sustainable model. To have a sustainable model, you need agricultural and production. Uh, the financial model is based on capitalism 
which is why we keep having these bubbles burst because the model is not real it is just fake money it's just numbers but it has a detrimental effect on real items um, it's just that the debt is so big now that people don't even understand how big it is the, but I've gone completely off concept uh, on a new tangent but yeah Philippines sit and think about the stuff you can do because I'll tell you now if you threw in doing stuff online um, selling the beer out the window or a small store getting a couple of peso peso machines and stuff you could find you'd be sustainable in two three months um, it's not hard it really isn't not at that level you know that's what I said I could start at 5,000 and work my way up I can do that it's not a problem um, I know a lot of other people couldn't manage it but um, it depends how committed you are to doing it um, because you could find that you could put off moving to the Philippines for another 10 years or you could move in a month because you started getting some work online and maybe you can get some extra work off your boss wherever you are doing telemarketing or dealing with sales or doing administration remotely um, which would get you started in the Philippines by next month. Alright, thanks for watching.